folks, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we bring you coverage of the 2022 MVP Open out at Maple Hill, our second playoff event for the Disc Golf Pro Tour season this year. We appreciate you all for tuning in with a special thank you going out to all of our Patreon supporters who help make all of this coverage possible. I am Dustin Murray. I'll be bringing you the commentary, and I'll be joined, as always, by Nathan Queen. Hey, hey, good to see you guys out here. Yeah, and I do want to explain really quick at the top, this is a bit of a special situation. The first round of this tournament for MPO was canceled due to lightning delays and all kinds of other weather. So FPO will be playing four rounds. We're only playing three rounds, which also means there is no cut. And again, at this event, we are down to 88 players for MPO with only the top 30 being qualified for the finale and then 30 through 36 will be in the play-in for the Pro Tour finale. So take a look at some bags. Yeah, getting into Greg Barsby bag. Putts with that classic big beat AVR and maybe mixing in that Nexus Firefly some also. Going to see some Toro and Rhino up shots. Really lean on the Eagle, Roadrunner, and some of the Scorpiuses for the long shots. Yeah, we got Vino putting with the PA3. Likes to use the A2 and A3 for his approaches. Probably will see the M2 and M4 out today in the woods. Also, of course, some D2s and D1s if he needs to get a little bit of distance. Maybe an F2 for a slower fairway. And then getting into Gannon's bag, putting with the PA3s, likes to go with that distortion and the M2s for those upshots and mid-range shots. And then really leans on the D1s and D2s for those distance drivers. May see a foul quarter or two out of them also. And now we get to Andrew Marweed for DGA, putts with the steady beadless. Might see the Quake and the Squall for some mids. Vortex, Pipeline, and Bonsai for some fairway drivers today. Maybe the Raptor as well for some forehands. And Hurricane and Hypercane's always there if he wants to throw for some bigger distance. And then straight into the iconic hole one out here at Maple Hill. You've got about 460 feet or so to clear that OB pond. It does play downhill, so slightly shorter than that for the distance. Once you've done that, you still have this very tight green to approach. This kind of a clown's mouth, I guess, entrance into Up it. first and, from uh, Group Texas, Greg Barsby. Yeah, this is the most iconic hole one probably in disc golf. And uh, we got Greg Barsby taking the box first. Currently ranked 21 in the Utah World Rankings, 26 in Disc Golf Pro Tour. Of course, a 2018 world champion with 64 career MPO wins. This year, he got third at Texas State, seventh at GMC, 15th at Idlewild as well as top 20 at the European Open. So he's been doing pretty well this year. And as you can see, the winds have risen out here at Maple Hill. Lots of wind and some cool Finland, weather also. Final, Michaela. Yeah, I believe they said it was about 45 degrees or so when this card was playing as we got Vino Makala coming up from Finland, currently ranked 29th in the Udis World Rankings, 30th in our Pro Tour points. So he's qualified for the finale, but he's kind of on the bubble. Third at DDO, sixth at the European Open, 11th at Des Moines and 14th at Worlds are some of his big results this year. Definitely a very powerful thrower. Unique putting form as well that you'll notice later. Looks like they have a pretty strong headwind with a little bit of left to right in it. And it's gotten a hold of that a little bit. Oh, wow. It doesn't quite clear the OB. From Urbandale, Iowa. Gannon Burr. Gannon Burr, currently ranked seventh in Utah's World Rankings, fourth in the Pro Tour points, has a bot of the semifinals, was last year's Rookie of the Year, and has wins this year at Masters Cup and Clash of the Canyons. Also got on the podium at Las Vegas, Mid-America, and Ledgestone. Top five at five different events this year outside of those podium finishes. And he's never placed outside of the top 25. I believe he's only 17 years old, and he's already got a lot of accolades. Yeah, he had a pretty long top 10 stretch this year also before he finished yep. even outside of the top 10. It's like he's going to get a pretty safe drive up here. Not much OB off to the left side. From Alpena, Michigan, Andrew Marwe. Of Andrew Marwe coming in ranked 35th in Edis World Rankings, and he's currently 37th in our Pro Tour points. So he is one spot below the play-in line. So getting good points here could get him in the finale. Came seventh at Deglo early this year. Had several top 20 finishes on tour this year. And going with a pretty understable disc, letting the wind carry it, and just able to get off to the left side of that OB pond. Pretty difficult here with this headwind. We'll see Vino throw from the drop zone. Yeah, I really feel like no one's in good position to approach the green on the second shot, so obviously Vino's you know, fighting for bogey here from the drop zone, but I feel like everyone else is likely going to be par in this hole at best. 
Yeah, and I think bogey may be one of the plays we see fairly often here today as 12 holes on this course averaged over par. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about how tight the lines are at this course and then considering how windy it is, I mean, it's just a recipe for high stroke counts. As Andrew gets up to a decent spot to be able to get up and down for his par, still going to have some work to do, though, having to hit that gap. Everyone's just kind of trying to get as close to the mouth of the green as they can to make their third shot easier to at least acquire a par here. And Greg, far enough to give it a go, gets a pretty lucky bounce to get inside of the mouth of that gap and not be OB. Hand here from Vino will at least limit the damage after the OB off the tee. Gannon, after his upshot put him in a pretty decent spot, he's going to be looking to get this up and down for his par. That'll do. Oh, yeah, able to do so nicely. And this is a pretty tough hole to start on, start out on out here, especially with this pretty strong headwind, averaging as the second most difficult hole on the course today with a 4.51. We only saw two birdies on the day. not quite able to connect to be one of those. No, no one on this card is going to be now. After that was kind of the last attempt at it. Zvano. Yeah, see Vino back in the, bird, the bogey. So, you know, limited to the damage after the OB off the tee, so not too shabby. And best case from the OB drive. Oh, and Greg actually... He left his short also, so he's going to pitch in his bogey. Two bogeys and a couple pars. Shout out to Albert Tam and Jeremy Colin, the only two players today to start their birdie off. To start their round off with a birdie. Going into hole two, 381 foot par three. You've got this OB rock wall all the way down the right side. And uh, now there's a roller blocker wall that was added this year that is on the front side of the green. Not exactly sure how far from the pin it is, but essentially it takes the roller out of play, forces the air shot. And yeah, the big thing on this hole is just not overturning it too much over this rock wall to the right. Yeah, I had to uh, I had to go to my, my caddy book there to see what that wall was while I was going through that walkthrough. It does look like that's probably about 45 feet away or so. A uh, pretty neat feature they added there, trying to make you throw that controlled shot straight down this fairway. It is a tight one, too, trying to get through this gap and trying not to go over this rock wall right. Very tough to birdie this hole. I'm sure there's more birdies on this hole than hole one, but still probably not that many, I'd guess. Yeah, a good bit more birdies on this one. There was 19 today. It's a great shot here from Barsby. Oh, wow. Well yeah. done. Here he's over that new rock wall nicely. Going to be up inside the circle. Take a look at that one again. Oh, yeah. Doesn't get much better than that unless it's ringing the chains. can bounce back here. And this is looking like it's going to break out in time. Oh, that actually got a nasty kick. Oh, man. It looked like it was going to come out, but that branch kind of killed it. Yeah. May have come out in time, but now he's going to be throwing three from halfway down the fairway. Going to be pitching up for two bogeys in a row to start the round. Now 
not the way you want to begin as we now get over here to Andrew Marweed. Kind of got caught up on this left-hand side, but should be able to get up and down for par from here. Yeah, it looked like his disc may have slipped out of his hand on his drive. It came out pretty early left, but got far right. enough. He's going to have a hyzer, oh, wow. hyzer around those trees, but leaves it right around circle's edge for his par look. Gann's got a little bit of a tricky situation ahead of him here to get to the pin. But good jump putt approach will get him there. Marwee from just inside the circle won't be able to go par par to open his day. Which, again, given the conditions and how scoring was going, a pretty darn good start here. Yeah, not a bad start at all. Hole two, only one of six holes averaging below par, but at a 2.98, that's not that far under par. Great bars before the birdie. And that'll do it for him as well. Just inside the circle, a little straddle putt gets in there. Cancels out that first hole right away. Yeah, even through two is going to be a good start today. With only those two players getting hole one, if you were able to get hole two and be under... You know, obviously that's your best start, but even through two, even through three is going to be good also, as this next hole is not an easy get. As Tam was the only person who went to down through two today. See Vino going bogey bogey to start, but still plenty of golf to try to correct the ship. Moving into hole three, 407 put, foot par three. Got to get kind of a, a righty backhand flex shot, drifting off to the right and then let it slowly fade left, skip up that hill a little bit. Very tight gap, and you've got to make it over this rock wall to be in bounds off of the tee. Rock wall is about just under 115 feet from the tee. So most people are going to make that, but it's just about actually getting to the circle. These tight corridors, that's the problem. Yeah, one of the more demanding lines on the course, I would say. You really yep. have to get the turnover, but make sure it comes back as well. Just the turnover is not enough. Yeah, I feel like this six and seven are so crucial on the front nine to not get wrong. Agreed. They're, they're just so tight, man. It's a little early for Marweed, and left is really the worst spot to be, I feel like, on this hole. Don't know if you'd agree or not. Yeah, left makes it really difficult to get up to the pin. From the right side, you'll most likely have a way to work around the trees, but that left side, it just gets pretty plinko -y. I know. Solid effort there. Yeah, just needed a bit more turn to the right, and he's going to have a pretty good shot, maybe get inside the circle. And here's why short left is tough. And maybe got up into circle two there. Finally able to jump putt his up near the bullseye for par. And oh boy, I don't know what he's got here. He's stretching out pretty far and with just an easy little pop of the wrist gets up there right around circle's edge. Gonna have a par look. Barsby knows how to throw in. Saw a couple of those at GMC, but this one's gonna go a little astray. Yeah. He seems really enthused about it as well. <laughs> Looking to get a little bit of extra wrist snap on that one to turn it off to the right. Oh, my. 
grazing chains, Gannon Burr. That would have been something special. Yeah, what a good attempt to save that par from way back. Almost able to connect. A little high from Barsby. Yeah, and Barsby going to give that birdie right back, put him to one over on the round. Yeah, it's the infamous BLT. Bogey lettuce and tomato sandwich. <laughs> that one didn't hit as well as I thought it would. You know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And uh, more we did take that one. Going to save another par here on hole three. I know, able to get back on track a little bit. After two bogeys to open the round, going to cart a par and move into a hole that is, a, is one of the best birdie opportunities we've had thus far. into hole four of that birdie opportunity I was talking about 246 feet downhill probably 30 feet or so really got to get your disc to slow down and stop uh, but also have to hit this very tight straight line uh, you've got some standstill shots you'll see some thumbers some forehands all kinds of different plays trying to hit this tight little gap yeah this is probably one of the most diverse tee shots you'll see on tour, just the so many different ways that people will approach it. Uh, early from Vino, common tree to hit, honestly. Greg. Gonna get the backhand down there cleanly. Just a little bit early out of the hand, but misses the trees. Circle's edge over there on the left side. I'd be surprised to see Gannon just like jump putt this. Oh, yep. And pulled it a bit off to the right side on that release. There is an, a bit of a line over there, but you kind of run out of space towards the end of it. Yeah, I've seen some people throwing back hands wide right in the past. I'll try to get down here. As you can see, Gannon a good bit short. I think he's just outside circle two here. Yeah. And he doesn't want to mess with this. And smartly doesn't want to mess with that. You see, even from this camera, you can tell that it's pretty steep downhill. Got that OB water behind it. Plus, the wind's blowing. Can easily pick up your disc any which way. But oh. Andrew Marweed going to card our first birdie of the day so far. Oh, excuse me. Our first, our second birdie of the day. But our first to be under par. Yes, that is true. And Greg wanting that one back. That would have got him back to even again quite able to connect with the wind lifting his putter up just a bit. Zufano takes his second par of the round. Yep. Lots of pars here. Marwee though, carding the only birdie, and like you said, the first to be under par here so far. We step on over to hole number five. Yeah, par three, 262 foot water carry. There is a small line off to the right side. Not sure we'll see anybody take it, but forehand, uh, fairway driver or mid-range gonna be best play here. Backhand turnover plays as well, depending on what the wind is doing. Yeah, I 
imagine we'll see at least three forehands here. I'm not sure what Vino's thinking. They're really oh, not throwing no. the sidearm, but oh, Marweed. That is so uncharacteristic. He is so well known for his forehand. Just so shocking to see that. Yeah, it just comes off a bit inside. Wind could definitely have something to do with that. Trying to keep it farther inside with the headwind coming. Vino gets his up high enough and inbound's gonna end up just outside circle one short right. The thing is, I think Marweed might actually still be in bounds, so he could oh, maybe still stay far here. Yeah. Greg. That's a great forehand there. Yeah, no par for Greg here. Let's take a look at that one again. Another forehand oh, master at work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, trusting it out there. It looks like there's a bit of a left to right wind. Trusting that disc out over the water, letting the wind push it back to the pin. deep into the right but safe and yeah are we still get par here and win oh no win definitely grabbing a hold of Gannon's tee shot as well as Andrew's upshot right there carrying them way off to the right side and again two holes in a row Gannon very begrudgedly lays that one up. Oh, Vino trying to get that little floaty bid. Lucky for it to at least lay down for him and he can at least get the par. This is Marweed for bogey. At least limits the damage. Yeah, great putt there. A couple good par putts and a good bogey putt right there. Uh, hole four and five, the second and third easiest holes on the course today. But not averaging all that far under under par, 2.85 for this hole. Uh, just with the wind and the weather conditions. Pretty difficult course that we're seeing these guys play today. Might not see those close to double digits that we like to see. Uh, moving into hole six, 390 foot par three, another very difficult tight line to hit. Really going to be kind of a hyzer stand up line for the backhand to get it to slowly drift off to the right or forehand line that's going to slightly stand up and then barely fade right. Yeah, this hole is a terror, that is for sure. Such a difficult line to hit, and there's really two lines. Once you make the initial fairway, once you get two-thirds of the way down there, it splits off to the right or the left. You've got OB all the way down the right side. Wow. Oh, this looks great. That is an absolute laser beam. What a shot, dude. Incredible. It just doesn't get much better than oh, that. Oh, and we get to watch this from the catch cam the entire time. He's taking that right side gap. And that's so scary to do with that OB right there, but he nails Man. it, man. Great shot. What a birdie to potentially get to to start steering the ship back in the right direction. One of the hardest holes there is. I would stack up hole six on against most holes out there, and it would still probably be one of the most difficult you'll play. Uh, it was the most difficult on the course today. Get over Averaging a 3.77. Like, the only hole that even, like, off the top of my head I know is harder than this one is that one from Northwood Black, the par 5. That always plays ridiculously over par. Yeah, that par 6, you mean. Yeah, that's what, yeah. <laughs> that's what I was referring to. But, yeah, 3.77. We only had three birdies today. Andrew Marwade, not one of them. He's going to be looking at a pretty difficult par putt from where he's at there. Not sure he's really even going to have a line. Yeah. Bar speech is always running these, man. He had a couple at GMC. 
Not quite with that one, but should be able to grab the par. And oh man, Gannon's got a whole lot of nothing over here. Yeah, he's found himself another basket over there lying off in the tall grass. <laughs> I mean, if they're not using it, I'll use it. Always down. And somehow Gannon finds a way to sneak through. Yeah, touchy little forehand shot. Looks to be inside the circle, putting up towards the basket for a par. And yeah, he's not looking at anything right here. Just wants to get through these trees. Able to do so, gonna find himself another bogey. What a par save from Gannon. Basically a no man's land, still lines up grabbing the three. Vino still yet to go, waiting. I know, I was just about to say that. <laughs> waiting to get to his drive while Greg looks to put in his par. I tell you what, the reward he's about to get is certainly going to be worth the wait, especially on this hole. I mean, man. Hardest hole on the course, Vino. Takes a birdie, moves him back to one over par, first birdie of the round. Best hole to do it yep. on. And uh, he was the CTP for today as well on this hole, according to the putting stats. So shout that out. Yeah, uh, Corey Ellis, Chris Clemens, other two birdies. go from the hardest hole on the course to the third hardest hole on the course hole seven 404 foot par three tight gap to hit uh ideally forehand i think is gonna be the best line uh but righty backhand with a late turnover yeah i mean this is just so tight Hole six, hole seven, that two hole stretch might be just one of the most intimidating to me as a viewer. Yeah, this one, the camera's not gonna even really show you the line here. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be hard to see, it's so tight. Uh, but just straight, if you can get it straight 380 feet, pretty much done your job. As a total amateur, I could only imagine the nightmare scores are racked up on this hole. Yeah, as a pro, you can get some nightmare scores going on this hole also. <laughs> that makes me feel a little better. Did you see Gannon getting a pretty good kick off to the left side? Going to be difficult from over there. And all four players. Greg did ski did sneak down there a little bit towards the middle but all four players not quite getting their shot off like they'd like to on this hole yeah, everyone's just kind of grinding their way through this one just trying to make the number as low as possible after not really finding a good landing zone I think really even the only par potential we have is Greg Marsby yeah, who knows what Gannon was going for there. Looks like he's going to end up short right, though. As Andrew carried a little bit of ways down the fairway off of his tee shot. He might have gotten up to circle two, but still just looks like he's kind of in scramble mode. As Vino... Speaking of scrambling, holy cow. Gets the... Pretty uh, nuts. Haribo, is that right? Haribo Gummy Bears? Isn't that the Gummy Bear I, I company? I think it is, yeah, okay. yeah. It gets his. I noticed that earlier, and I wasn't 100% sure, so I didn't say. Gummy Bears sneaking right. through the woods now. Did you see where Gannon's got off to? No, get off that. Oh, and Gannon catching the last tree before you get up to the basket. Gonna leave him... Probably right around circle's edge, putting uphill. And Greg, throw in. King, trying to get him another throw in there, but going to have to settle for that par. 
And Gers putting has certainly bailed him out of some tough situations so far here on this front nine. I know that'll be in the red for him, but could have been much worse. Cavano also able to connect on his bogey putt after struggling down this very tight fairway. Greg also going to be able to get his par, keep him at even. And Andrew Marweed taking the wrong type of turkey with uh, four, with three bogeys in a row. Moving into hole eight, 364 foot, par three, water carry. Got to make it all the way over this water. Make sure you don't go past this wall also. Take your mid-range or fairway driver and give it a good rip. Also one of the best crowds in disc golf gathers on this hole every year. The old eight holes. Shout out to them. Also shout out to Zach Benson, the guy who kind of organizes all that, I believe. I got to meet him and play with him. He lives out in Pensacola now, but always makes the trip back for this event. Oh, this looks pretty. Indeed it was. Going to be inside 20 feet, looking back at the basket. Is that going to break? Kind of a branch assist there, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah, he'll take it. I think it would have been safe without the branch. Yeah, it would But have. definitely a longer putt. Mm-hmm. Will we go four for four on the island? It's looking pretty good. Oh, boy. We have. Let's take a look at this one again. It's Andrew Marweed going with the forehand. That counter spin going to cross just in front of that pin. Looking for a good birdie, and we're looking for that first diamond frame of the round here. Don't encourage him, comments. And despite how our card has all gotten on this island, Greg Barsby collecting the first birdie on the card. This hole did average over par with 34% taking a birdie, but 44% taking bogey or above. It is that kind of hole, right? I mean, birdie or bogey, if you don't make the island, it's a very tough drop zone putt. Right, Vino connects, fighting his way back to one over. Thank you. Let's see if Gannon and Andrew can finish this off. This would be a rare star frame, I imagine, for the day. Gannon jams his in there, just like always. Going to put him to one over for the round also. Marweed. Looking to go to one over, and we've got diamonds. They also have free candy. We're talking to some other vehicles. Thought it was kind of relevant. I don't know. Moving into hole nine, 400 foot. Par four. Uh, pretty significant uphill, and then dropping back downhill even farther than you've gone uphill. If you can get over that hill and to the bottom, you've done your job off of the tee, plus some, um, uh, gonna have a very easy approach. Most likely you're gonna be throwing from the side of this hill a little bit though. Have some speed control to deal with on that upshot. Oh boy. Yeah. That was not the app that he was looking for. Because it was a U dis sign. <laughs> yeah. I'm just not mm -hmm. on it today, man. I'm, well, I'm, I'm not helping you out too much. I'm kind of leaving you. I'm no, kind of no. leaving you silent on there. If if we were swapped roles and you were telling that bad of jokes, I would probably do the same thing. So I I think actually it helps. At least they get to laugh at my pain. Is Vino 
Does get off a better shot than Greg, but ends up over on that right side. That wind is crazy. Yes, it is. Yeah, man. that wind has grabbed his disc and moved him over to the right as well. We'll see if he got any good ground play to get him back out to the middle or not. Norweed going with the sidearm and getting kicked off to the left side as we hear the eight holes getting revved up in the background for the next card. Yeah, they always clap in the card as they're approaching the tee pad, so you will hear those claps on hole nine at times. Greg making it up and over to where you, about where you want to be off of your tee shot. And it seems like we're struggling our ways down hole nine right now. Someone else makes the island. Bino finds the center of the fairway. Pulled that one out wider than he was wanting to, but does fight all the way back, gets onto the island. He's going to have his par look. Now Gannon has a decision here. Looks like he probably is going to go aggressive, try to make it on the island. Yeah, not surprised. I mean, I know he was frustrated with, like, what holes three and four where he had to lay up. He wasn't doing it again. And he makes it. Oh, that was a yank. He said fights back in for him. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, a few shots so far I feel like are fairly lucky to be in bounds on this approach shot. Looks like. Did Andrew throw there and is throwing again now? Oh, yes. no. That was a great shot. <laughs> yeah, From where yeah he was. he'll take that. He's tapping in for what, a double bogey now? I lost count, honestly. I think I'll let yeah, the graphics that guy might tell just me. be single. <laughs> oh, As wow. Gannon falling just barely short of that OB line off of the upshot. Just uh, probably a 40 feet or so on that one. Yeah, casual. Little flick of the wrist, just barely grabs on that right side, able to card a birdie, get himself back to even on the front nine. But from Lars, we get to the par. Low in the front nine at one under, which was a pretty rare feat. Yeah, not not much under par going on today. The course averaging two strokes above par overall. We're going to see Marwi grab the bogey there. And also, I do want to give a shout out to Adam Hammes. Threw it in from 125 feet on this hole for birdie. Pretty crazy play from him as we take a look at the standings right now. Bars be at the top of this card, one under, tied for 12th. Gannon Burr just outside the top 20. But again, it's a very tight field, as you can see on the leaderboard. Just a couple of strokes separating first from fifth at this point in the round. Yeah, it's been a tough day. Lots of bogeys on our card, and I imagine a lot of bogeys throughout the field. Wind's picking up, but an attackable back nine coming up. Indeed it is, and we appreciate you all for tuning into this coverage. Hope that you'll follow, subscribe, so you can catch the rest of our coverage of this event, as well as this finale coming up. Many other events, I'm sure, in the future. And without further ado, I'm Dust Murray, and with me is Nathan Clean, and we'll see you out in the back nine here we'll shortly. We'll see you guys out there.